Hey guys, it's Shane with Fly Solo. Today I want to do a quick video talking about some of the different setups I've had for solo fly fishing saltwater over the years. I've had several different rigs and each one kind of has its pros and cons. So I'm going to kind of run down uh, some of the benefits and, and, and disadvantages of the different setups that I've had and specifically as they relate to saltwater fly fishing by yourself. So if you're fly fishing and you have a buddy that you always go with, this, this might not apply to you. Um, we're looking at skiffs and setups that you can pull through the flats and then transition, grab your fly rod and cast quietly, quickly, without scaring fish and without getting your line too tangled up. So this is a pretty specific kind of a niche thing that we're looking at here, but if you are looking to fly fish the saltwater flats by yourself, this might really help you out. I hope it does, so let's get started. Okay guys, so the first thing that I bought when I wanted to start saltwater fly fishing the flats by myself was this 15 foot Johnson V hold John boat skiff here. And I built a uh, fiberglass casting deck up front with a hatch and it was really nice. So if you have two people and you don't have 50 grand to drop on a polling skiff, in my opinion, this is the best way you can go for fly fishing the saltwater flats uh, with two people though, okay? Uh, for one person, for doing it solo, this is almost one of the worst uh, things. The polling platform I found extremely difficult to cast from. I tried the laundry basket stripping basket method, and I tried several things, and just the line would get, uh, would get tangled up, and you would have to anchor and fish, and then the waves are slapping the boat. You're scaring fish, so I really wanted to be pulling and moving as I was fishing, you know, and, and with one person, this was just really tough. Had a great time on this boat. I took it to the Keys. It pulled. I thought it pulled really well. Um, it traveled, you know, it was quiet in the flats relatively and it, um, and it tracked pretty well and it would go about 25, 30 miles an hour. There's a picture of my dad on the bow in the keys. We had a great trip. Uh, but most of the time I'm fishing by myself. And so, um, when I got rid of this skiff is when I really started thinking about what's the best way to fly fish the salt water by yourself. Okay, and so the next thing that I got was this Sea Eagle Fish Skiff 12.6 inflatable paddleboard. Now, the great thing about the Sea Eagle 12.6 paddleboard is the build quality. Everything I've found that Sea Eagle makes is really, really well made. I beat this thing up and it just kept taking it and never had any problems. Um, it has a really cool little kind of built-in transom that holds a trolling motor in the stern. And so I used that and I would, uh, you know, troll out to the flats and then kind of drift fish off of this because you couldn't really pull it. You could paddle it a little bit, but that doesn't work too well in the wind. So I would generally just kind of set up on one end of the flats and let the wind carry me across the flats and kind of sight fish that way. Um, typically what I found though was by the time I saw the fish, the, the boat had already scared the fish. Um, just because these inflatables are kind of loud in the water, there's a lot of hole slap there and you're sitting on top. So any kind of wind, you're kind of slapping the waves pretty hard. And, um, and you're sitting basically just a couple inches above the water. So you don't have that great of vision. You're not seeing very far. So generally, by the time I would see fish, they would see me. So I did catch quite a few fish off of this paddleboard, but not that many sight fishing. And I really wanted to sight fish. And so what I decided was that one day I was using the Sea Eagle and I saw somebody on an Aero Rover. And I had seen the Aero Rover and kind of heard about it. And um, the cool thing about the Aero Rover is it takes a 10 horsepower outboard. So that immediately kind of got my attention. And then one day I saw someone using it and they were standing up on a cooler and casting off of the cooler. And I thought, I was like, oh wow, that's totally perfect. You know, it's stable enough to stand up on. I always wanted to get a cooler and stand up on this uh, Sea Eagle and it was just too unstable. I fell off every time. And so once I saw that guy on the Aero Rover, I went ahead and I got an Aero Rover and I got the six horsepower Suzuki, this one right here. 
Now, when I got the Aero Rover is when I first started really getting consistent sight fishing opportunities. I would stand up on that gray cooler and I could see pretty far. And so on a really calm day, and I was able to pull the rover from that, uh, from that cooler pretty effectively. And so if there's no waves and wind, you can really get into the flats and you can see fish far enough away that they can't see you and you can sight fish effectively off of the Aero Rover. I really, uh, really had a good time on the Aero Rover. I ended up taking that uh, rack thing that holds the rods off and I took the uh, tiller extension off of the outboard and cleaned it up a little bit. And then I would use a hard stripping basket and I would use a pole mate pole caddy. And so I would push pole through the flats. And then when I saw a fish, I would um, holster the pole on the caddy and then I would whip out the rod from the O-Pro rod holder I had on my belt, and I would whip it out and cast, then the line would be stored in the stripping basket. Now, it's a pretty complicated method, and it's really not ideal. There was a lot, but I really did get a lot of opportunities. So I like the Rover, it's really stable. I like that it has the anchor kind of built in, um, the things that I didn't really like was just kind of that I felt like it had a lot of wasted space. Like it was 12 foot, six inches long, but all the space behind the motor is worthless. And then everything up in the bow was really hard to stand on. Um, so, you know, the worst thing about the Rover though, was setting it up at the boat ramp. The last time that I went, uh, that I took it out, I went to a boat ramp that, um, I kind of had to park at and the water was like, I don't know, maybe 50 yards away from the parking lot. And so as I was setting up, I think at least 10 or 12 boats launched and took off before I was able to get everything together and and get it out in the water. It just takes a long time to set up all the things. There's two compartments that you have to blow up. And I was using the hand pump because I found that boats, electric pumps were really bad. They both died on me within months of getting them. And they're like $150 each. So I just kind of never replaced them. I kind of just used the hand pump. And um, so setting up the Aero Rover got really tedious. And then if there's any wind, you get that slapping of the hull and it scares the fish. So I would kind of be limited to days where it was no wind whatsoever or else I really didn't want to go because it was like such a pain to set up. And so I kind of started looking for something that wasn't inflatable because there's just no way, if you fish the saltwater flats, you know it's almost always windy. There's almost always a little bit of waves and they're just slapping those inflatable holes. So I decided that I wanted something with a V-hole that sat down in a little bit more like a kayak, right? But I never really like kayaks because I don't like to sit. I like to stand up as high as possible and fish. So... This all led me to where I'm at now and what I personally believe is the best thing that you can have to solo fly fish the saltwater flats. And that's the solo skiff. This one right here, it was real ugly like this when I got it, but I was really excited about it and I did a lot of work on it. And now we have this right here and I'm going to kind of break down everything that I did to basically just customize this solo skiff specifically for fly fishing. So the first thing that I really wanted to do was just get rid of all these bars and everything that I thought might snag fly line. This guy had this big trolling motor mount in the front and a battery. There was wires running everywhere, lights, all kinds of stuff. So I just really wanted to take all that stuff off, clean it up, make it simple. And then I just got some brown silicone. I plugged all the holes. And so I kind of just returned it to like as naked as possible and as light as possible. And then you can see the first thing I did was I just, uh, I spent like 20 bucks and I got some remnants of sea deck and I just kind of put it all over the front like this, partly to cover the holes, partly because the brown is hot and mostly because the push pull, uh, if it hits any of these areas, I didn't want it to make a lot of noise and scare fish. So, um, and I'll probably put a few more remnants there towards the back and stuff later. 
Um, I added the push pull holders there from Hammer Tech Marine. Um, you can see right here on the left side, I installed a rod holder, and the right I just left blanked off. Eventually, I'll probably put one in the right too. You can see the two uh, push pull rests that I put there, and I just took a yoga block and cut V's into it. I think I got two yoga blocks to, to do all the different bees that I made. You can see that latch there that was in the front where those holes are. I moved that to the side so that it wouldn't catch on fly line. And the first time I took it out, it still did catch a couple of times, but I think it was much better that way in that location. Um, I made this stripping mat out of an old car floor mat and some zip ties, and it worked really well. I'm going to make a little bigger though, so it comes up over the sides. Uh, when I was out on the bar and it was windy, I was I was floating off the boat a little bit, my fly line. Um, this raw, this, uh, this, what do you call that rail in the back there? I left to, to lift it up, but a lot of times I was finding the push pull was hitting it and making some noise. Uh, and when you see a fish and you're transitioning to the rod, you don't want to have to look back and hit that small little yoga blot block rest and so I'm going to cover that with a pool noodle and then put one right there where the push pulls resting a little more sea deck uh, just to keep it quiet at, at, for the transition like we've talked about um, and then you see that the guy had fabricated a, a transom saver that thing is really nice this rubber pouch here where I got the pliers and the nippers that there was two of those on one on each side and so I took one off and then one I moved to the back there where it's more out of the way um, I put another yoga block on the other side, just in case you ever want to set the push pull on that side, keep things quiet. Right here, I added a little loop to stick the butt end of the fly rod into when you're underway. And then I put a bunch of uh, C deck there just for extra protection for the reel. Um, and that is about it. Um, that was the last thing that I really did and I was uh, pretty much ready to go from here I'm probably just gonna add a few more sea decking pieces along the uh, gunnels there because it's like so much cooler that brown really is hot I'm not sure why they make that color I think it's more for duck hunters or something but um, on the saltwater flats I would much prefer a white one but man um, I really can't say enough good things about this solo skiff in every way possible in my opinion it beats the arrow rover for solo uh, fly fishing the saltwater flats uh, it moves faster through the flats, it takes waves better, it's more stable, it's got the built-in uh, casting platform, it's got so much storage, built-in cooler, it really is just an awesome machine, guys. So uh, if you're wanting to fly fish the saltwater flats like me, save yourself the time and go straight for the solo skiff. I'll see you guys next week.